Okay, we're on to the hardest bit. This is going to be sig figs and combined operations, and this throws students for a loop every semester. Um, so it's worth a little time now to figure it out so that it, it doesn't trouble you as you go forward with your, your science, um, science degree. The secret in combined operations is to use those rules we talked about for addition, subtraction, and multiplication division in the order you do the operations. So let's take a look at this first problem. Here we have a subtraction operation in the numerator of a fraction. And if you're plugging this in your calculator, if you're doing it by hand, you do this subtraction first, followed by the division operation. And we're going to treat sig figs exactly the same way. If we take 1.07 minus 0.8826, what we end up with is 0.1874. And this still needs to be divided by 0 0.762 inverse molar, inverse centimeters. Now let's look at this number here in the numerator before we do the division in our calculator. I've just hit 1.07 minus 0.8826 equals, and I get this number. Here I'm uncertain in the hundredths place, or the 10 to the minus 2 position, and here it's the minus 4. This is a larger number and is going to determine the uncertainty in our answer, and we're going to have uncertainty in this 8. Now, your textbook tro um, suggests underscoring the first uncertain digit as a way to denote that that's the last significant figure while still leaving these extra digits in there for the calculation to avoid rounding errors. But here I note that so I can see what's happening. If I do the next step, the division, this comes out to be 0 0.2459. The molar and centimeters come up into the numerator. And, and there we go. But to determine the number of sig figs, I need to look at the things I'm multiplying and dividing. This is just a two-step problem. I did my addition subtraction. I figured it out. Now this has two significant figures. This has three significant figures. And I'm going to go with the fewest number of significant figures, which is 2, which says I should round it to that position, and I get 0 0.25 molar centimeters. Okay, so order of operations, just one step at a time and follow the sig figs through the calculation. In this second example, we're doing an addition, and I'm going to add these things, get my answer, and then divide the answer by 3.7. Well, let's, let's make it interesting. Let's say it's 3.700. Okay. So when I do this addition, I come out with 10.51, and I still need to divide by 3.700. In looking at the significant figures, I start with the addition operation, and here I was in the minus 2, here I'm in the minus 1 spot, here I'm in the minus 1, I'm going to take this 10 to the minus 1 spot there, and that's my sig last significant figure, my first uncertain figure. So now this has three significant figures, this has four significant figures. I just added the zeros to make the problem more interesting. <coughs> and when I do this calculation and, and look at what I get, um, <coughs> this comes out to be 2.8405 three sig figs, one, two, three, and I round to that spot, 2.84. Now if I hadn't added those zeros just to make the problem more fun, that would be two sig figs and my answer would be 2.8. So <coughs> again, the steps, addition comes first in this case, so I do that operation, determine the sig figs, leave a few extra digits to avoid rounding errors, use an underscore to note where I am, so that I can keep track of it as I go through the calculation. Okay, here's some that go the other way, um, but it's going to be the same process. The way this problem here is written first, we're going to do the multiplication division first, and then addition. Here we have two sig figs for the 0.18, three sig figs for the 82.7, and when I do that division, it comes out as 459.44, and I still need to add the 114.25 to that. Okay, 
but 3 and 2, my answer should have two significant figures. So that 5 position is uncertain. I'm going to use that underscore to, to note it. And now I'm going to do the addition operation. And when I do the addition operation, I come out to 573.694. Okay, this one was uncertain in the tens place, and this one's uncertain in the 10 to the minus 2 spot. Okay, the 10 is larger than the 10 to the minus 2, so I'm going to have uncertainty in that position. Okay, and when I round this, it comes to 570. That's going to be my answer there. So in this case, we did the multiplication division operation first. And so we do the sig figs through that multiplication and division, look at our answer and where the last significant figure is in that answer, and then we follow the addition rules when we're doing addition. Okay, this is a little bit of a tricky one. We're going to start off, in this case we need to resolve the stuff in the parentheses first, and in the parentheses we need to do these division operations before we do the subtraction. So 28.2 times 10 to the minus 16. Okay, 1 over 298 comes out to be 0 0.0033557, and I want to take 1 over 316, which comes out to be 0 0.0031646. Okay, this had three significant figures. That I'm going to treat as exact, so my answer here should have three significant figures. Okay, that's the 10 to the minus 5 spot. And so now I'm going to do my subtraction there. 28.2 times 10 to the minus 16 times, and when I do that subtraction, I come out with 1.91148 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, both of these were 10 to the minus 5 position. So in this case, 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 5, that's the last significant figure after that subtraction operation. So if I look here, I have three sig figs. Here I have two sig figs. I'm doing multiplication now, so my answer should have two sig figs, the fewest number of sig figs in anything in the calculation. And when I do this, I come out with 5.39 times 10 to the minus 19. To bring it to two significant figures is 5.4 times 10 to the minus 19. So the theme you should have gotten through these combined operations things is break things down by the order of operations. Do each step in the order of operations individually, and if you're doing addition subtraction, use addition subtraction rules. Figure out the sig figs in your answer and go to the next step in the calculation. If you're doing multiplication division, use multiplication division rules. Figure out the sig figs in your calculation and, and move on. So that's the, the gist of how you deal with compound operations. You just need to be systematic in going through each step of the operation. Good luck as you go forward, and be sure to talk to your instructor if you have questions.